Our God is a God of the fatherless, and we are so glad that you're joining us on Hope Today. I'm here with Angela Madden, and we are going to dive into such an incredible conversation and organization today. I am so excited to talk with our guests today. Have you looked at the world around you and wondered what initiatives are in place to combat some of the pain and problems we see? Have you maybe even been like me, hoping for mothers and fathers to take their rightful position and bring some direction and hope to society in desperate need? Well, today we will get an up-close look at a growing group of strong, godly men who are serious about seeing change in their communities and this nation. George Spencer, National Director of Mad Dads, joins us today sharing how this organization is a very present help in these troubling times. Sydney, I could not think of a better guest to have on our show today. Yeah, I think it's so important that we talk about what is happening in our streets, what is happening in our cities. And you know, one thing we love about Mad Dads is that Cornerstone Television Network, we actually support them through our initiative called Cornerstone Care. So this is an organization that is near and dear to our hearts. And I know there's many of you, I know my family that we We've had family members, we've lost, lost loved ones that have been affected by gun violence. I know my cousin, you know, years ago was killed because of senseless violence. And so I think this is such an important thing and it's beautiful to see when men of God stand up yes. in our communities and just say enough is enough, but they pray and intercede. So you're definitely want to stay tuned for our conversation with George Spencer. He's a passionate, just an amazing man of God. I'm just so glad that he's with us today. Yeah, we need our strong men. You know, it, it, our communities are results of our families as the family goes, so goes the community. As the community goes, so goes the state. As the state goes, so goes the nation. And so today I'm excited to hear more about what it looks like in the streets, up close and personal, and how these men are engaging a culture that is truly troubled, Sydney. It really is troubled. I know this in my church and just different things that I see just in the neighborhoods that I live around, that I'm around in and surrounded by is that there is just such a generation that, you know, sometimes we don't understand about violence. We don't understand what's happening. We don't understand about the gang banging, all of these things it's because a lot of these men and even women young women they're yes. like misguided because they don't have that love factor they don't have a family there's just so much brokenness so they're looking for and searching for things that are outside that yes. to give them that comfort and that peace and so I just think we need to just really lift up those young women and those young people that are out there and I think a lot of times we point the finger and we say we don't understand but it is so important for us as the body of Christ to show love to be there and encourage them. Yeah, we always want to tell them of the Heavenly Father, but how can they have an accurate picture of what our Heavenly Father looks like if there is not a real tangible father or mother in their life that is showing them what love from a parent looks like? We are so excited to dive into this and we'll be right back after this short break. Cornerstone Television exists to spread the good news through Bible-based programs and a fully staffed prayer line. Through CTVN, lives are saved, hearts, minds, and bodies are healed, and Jesus is lifted high. We can't do this work without you. Would you consider sending a gift this month to keep the gospel moving forward with power? When you give, we'll send you Listen, Love, Repeat, which presents scriptural examples of those who lived alert, including Jesus, who noticed those who least expected to be seen, gives creative ideas for showing love to friends and family, suggests practical ways to reach out to the lonely, marginalized outcast, helps you comfort the grieving, and so much more. Ask for your copy of Listen, Love, Repeat when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Our next guest is the National President of Mad Dads, which stands for Men Against Destruction, Defending Against Drugs and Social Disorder. George Spencer is also the president of the Greater Pittsburgh Area Mad Dads chapter, and he joins us now to share how this nationally affiliated Christian organization is preparing men and women to restore safe communities in the surrounding area. George, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you, thank you for having me. We are so excited to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and this beautiful organization. Well, a little bit about me. Uh, I was raised here in North Braddock, Pennsylvania. Okay, so I'm a graduate of General Braddock Area High School. So, you know, I grew up in the Braddock, North Braddock Rankin area for those who are geographically familiar with the greater Pittsburgh area. Um, I was, uh, went to college for a few years, military, 
and married while I was in the military and raised our family in Wilkinsburg. And um, that was, my children went K to 12 in the Wilkinsburg school system during the years where uh, the crack epidemic began sweeping the nation, you know, from the West Coast to the East Coast is the way I look at it. And, um, you know, um, my daughter was in high school in the mid 90s, you know, and, um, and during that time period, you know, um, there was an escalation in the Pittsburgh area with a number of, of gangs, you know, that were driven by uh, drug sales. Crack cocaine seemed to be the, 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 the driving force behind that in those years. And we, had, we, we suffered a lot of loss of life uh, during that time period. It was around that time Mad Dad started in Omaha, Nebraska, in 1989, actually. Omaha, Nebraska had the same problems, Pittsburgh, and most urban America and even rural America began to experience. Mm -hmm. And so what happened in my case, in uh, 2004, I had some concerns, you know, about some things that even began to touch our family mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the broader sense, not just my nuclear family, but you, know, you start talking about nieces, nephews, cousins, and looking at the situation. And um, we were attending an event where Dr. Jawanza Kajufa was a speaker, if you're familiar with him. And he had written a book, Positive Solutions for the Black Community. And after giving all the stats that we get used to hearing, how many dropouts there are, this, that, and the other, he mentioned, well, one organization that went from theory to practice to address the issue of young men ages 14 to 25 wreaking havoc in the community. People can't sit in the porch in the summer and mm -hmm. all the different things that happen when you have lawlessness. And he says, it's called Mad Dads. I said, hmm, just like you did, I did that. Yes. <laughs> and I'm like, well, let me see what's going on with that. And I'd heard my pastor preach at times from the bull pit, Bishop Joseph Garlington, that some things aren't going to change in the community until the men start walking mm -hmm. the streets. And so when I read what man, I said, oh, maybe this is who they're talk he's talking about. So I asked him the next day at church, and he said, well, I don't know about them, but get me the information. And uh, from there, it was on. You know, uh, he liked it, asked me would I be willing to be the point man. I guess he figured since I brought it up, I really wasn't looking to be that, but I'm, it's one of the best decisions I made in my life. I love your story because even as you're conveying that you took it to Bishop Garlington and he pointed it back to you, it was really a moment of a father, of a man that you look to, giving you direction in your life and your calling. So yes. would you tell us a little bit about what is the driver that continues to keep you on this path of mad dads and pushing forward to see our communities changed? Well, for me, it's an it's a, it's a easy situation. I, I, you, you, I just look at the news. And I live in the midst of the news. Mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, it, you know, predating Mad Dads, uh, for me, it's fatherhood 101. I mean, it was my dad when I was growing up. He couldn't know that me and my brothers would be somewhere where we were in danger and not personally show up. Mm -hmm. that, just, that just wasn't him. Whether we were right, wrong, or whatever, he was going to show up and hold whoever accountable. And Mad Dads, uh, by design, are street chaperones that hold children and adults accountable. And, you know, it's not law enforcement or what have you, but it's just a matter of son, don't do that. Mm -hmm. I love that, and it's so yeah. needed. So when you say that you guys are chaperones, you're on the streets, what does that look like on like a typical mad dad experience? Sure. What am I going to sure. see? And it, and, it, it, and it depends on what's, what's, what's going on. It could be anything from, you know, one of the things that really touches my heart is sometimes, I'll tell you what, this Saturday we were in Turtle Creek, walking around, about a half dozen children, will you walk with us? After a brief conversation, well, yeah, where are you going? Yeah, this, and we start walking around with them. But, it, 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 you know, it was, that's what the patrol was that day. It, it, it wasn't about a criminal element. It was about children that they were fascinated. But what's mad dads? And, and began to just share with them, well, we, you know, we like, we're peacemakers. We like to keep people safe. We like to encourage people. Yes. You know, they weren't doing anything mischievous or anything. So sometimes it, we, we'll, we'll even throw a ball around with children. And then there are other times, um, to the other extreme, uh, downtown Pittsburgh's been having a lot of violence yesterday. There's shots fired downtown yesterday. 
Okay, well, there are three, I think it's three or four schools downtown Pittsburgh now, mm -hmm. at least three, charter schools. Kappa is down there, um, mm -hmm. City Charter, and uh, it's, it's just another one. So, but, but, the, but the bottom line, there are children down there, mm -hmm. and you got an environment where sometimes they're the problem, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you get uh, a large number of children uh, together. Um, it's not unusual that the after school fight can happen. Mm -hmm. that, that went on, my 50th class reunion is this mm -hmm. year. And it would be the after school spike during those years. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that thing gets out of control these days where it gets the shots fired. Mm -hmm. So uh, we actively become peacemakers when the environment gets to be, you can tell when, okay, this, this thing, somebody doesn't step into this, this is gonna get out of control. Mm -hmm. And so, Usually, that is enough. You know, it's that, that an adult that is willing steps into that and brings it to peace. And I just say this, we have a motto, when men stand up, boys sit down. Mm, that's good. Yeah. You know, George, just as you're talking, like something that you brought up that I think a lot of us can't fully understand is that when you're living in the midst of, you see the news stories and it's mm -hmm. happening in your community, in your neighborhood. Can you talk to us about just different moments that Mad Dads has had to be in the midst of just something that is going on and also the spiritual, the deeper spiritual component and level what's going on and happening in those situations when the violence is escalating that we don't fully comprehend and understand? Well, well I'll tell you what, uh, Zone 5 of the Pittsburgh Police Department, they cover the East End, which includes Homewood and and several years ago, there was a point where the Zone 5 commander sent a few officers to our meeting. He said, hey, look, uh, we're getting a lot of complaints about uh, Homewood Avenue and Frankstown intersection. And it, that, that's historically been a problem area. That didn't start with the children today. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, 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 you, you know, my parents' generation, one of our founding father's generation who passed away in his 80s, that was a problem area. So this isn't new. There's a stronghold there. Speak yeah. to the spiritual. Yeah. This isn't new. Yeah. That got entrenched years ago. Okay. Uh, so, we, 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 hey, we, we, could, could you help? I said, well, what are you doing? So they were doing uh, what's commonly called beat cups, you know, four hours a day, five days. We said, well, we got Saturday. We picked up Saturdays and began to go there. And so mm -hmm. By being there, then you learn, well, what's, what's the dynamics here? There was a particular location where, well, people go up there and shoot. As men against destruction, defending against drugs. Well, I think we need to keep going. Okay, so that's an immediate deterrent. It's also about engaging, well, who's addicted that, and that's visible because they can't get to yeah. it. And so that could turn into a prayer moment. Um, uh, engaging youngsters that, or whatever age, that would be selling it. Yeah. And that's, a, that's an engagement. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's another conversation. Yeah. And, and, so, and, and I immediately just have a memory of a young man that some of the guys knew that it turned into uh, a salvation moment. He died two weeks later. He, he, he was in a, um, a after hours club. He was in the early 20s. He got murdered two weeks after. And far as we know, we didn't hear about him doing anything. But for whatever reason, I don't know what had happened before he prayed that prayer. So we never know to what extent the encounters, what is going to happen. It could, it could be for eternal, eternity issue for somebody that embraces the message. But if, if nothing else, it can be, um, wow, you know, that situation that could have been turned violent, turned peaceful. Okay, um, you might have known Reverend Stoudemire, the late Reverend Sheldon Stoudemire. You know, he was pretty popular in the Pittsburgh. He was a member of Mad Dad's. Uh, I can remember a patrol that looked like it was gonna be a big ass school fight. He had the gift and it turned into a prayer circle. Yeah. Now, that's not usually the way it, it happens, but it, who's there? Yes. And so when somebody that's anointed by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to move in a certain dimension, yes. that can be the outcome. Yes. Now, that being said, we're happy, even if it's way short of that, and it's just that the fight didn't happen. <laughs> so it can go any number of ways in the engagement. 
What I hear you saying is that you're literally light in the midst of darkness. Exactly. And no matter what, there's an outcome of that that it points us towards heaven, whether it's just they, don't, they keep driving by or it breaks out into a prayer service. Yes. For those who are maybe watching today and, and they're hearing this mad dads and they're thinking, I know as a believer, I'm called to do something. I'm called to be light in darkness. How can they get associated with the mad dads organization and arise and use their gift that they have? Well, it's a matter of uh, you can, they can pick up the phone and, and, and I tell you what, the phone number on the national website and the Pittsburgh website comes directly to me. Wonderful. Call me. Call me and be what you want to see. Uh, you know, I get the question a lot of times, well, can mad dads come fill in the blank neighborhood? Well, who's over there that are willing to put the shirt on? Now, that doesn't mean we won't come, but if you want a sustained presence, that's a, that's, that, that requires at least two people. Yeah. That's what our literature says, a minimum of two go on patrol. Everybody wants 222. Who's willing to be two? What has now been a 17-year uh, uh, presence of Mad Dads in Pittsburgh didn't start with the numbers we have now. That was four of us that were willing to go on a particular corner that we call a hot spot that had terrible situation going. I walked down that street. Now, at that point, I was in my late 40s. I was 50 by the time we started the chapter. And the, the gray is, the beard is grayer now, but I clearly wasn't a teenager. And I'd have teenagers asking me, hey, aren't you looking? Then I, they get to look, and now they want to start, what is that wrong guy? <laughs> but that's an indict, that was an indictment on my generation. They'd even had to, they were comfortable enough to even ask me that. Mm. Well, I walk down there now, nobody asks me that anymore. Okay, so uh, I say, be what you want to see. You want to see that stop? Start, put on the shirt, and let's go. Or do, be a part of something. Everybody's not, maybe not want to be in Mad Dads, but we can't sit around and let their blood end up on our hands because we were too afraid to get cussed out or something. And that's usually what I hear from people. Mm -hmm. Oh, kids today, well, they do listen. First of all, how are we talking to them? Yeah. And we, we don't step up accusing anybody of anything. A lot of children, I'm taught, children get their affirmation from their father. Well, if dad isn't around, what man comes around and affirms you when you hear a good story? All the stories on the street aren't horrible. Yeah. There are children going to college and doing all kinds of good things, and when we hear that, we celebrate it. Yes. So, you know, George, just hearing, like, your passion and what you're sharing, I just really feel that there's a man that's watching right now. Can you just, like, look into the camera and speak to him that needs to take that step and stand up in his neighborhood and be that father to that generation, that there's a lot of orphans that are out there that are looking for that affirmation. Absolutely. Love. Brother, you and I can do together what neither of us can do alone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Mad Dads by uh, organization structure uh, was unite the strong drug-free men in the community together, particularly uh, uh, Christian men, all right? And recognize that there, in some instances, were independent evangelists on the street or what have you, but to be a united force on the streets. And so I welcome you into our ranks. I want to speak by faith that there are members watching this right now that you've just been waiting for the same message those of, of us that are in it now. That's something I want to be a part of. And I tell you what, we enjoy it. We enjoy doing Mad Dads. Mm -hmm. It is a powerful ministry, George. We are so thankful for being a man who stood up and said, I want to be the change. A man who is truly representing the heart of the Father to those who don't have that man around, or maybe that man's just not speaking the good truth that they need to hear. So we applaud your efforts. We thank you for the Mad Dads organization, both here in Pittsburgh and nationally. Thank you so much. Thank you know, just as you were talking, I just really felt this in my spirit that there's somebody who's watching right now that you have been hearing and listening to what George was saying and speaking, and you are one of those men and you are one of those young women that have been out on the street. You know what the gang's banging. You're just, you're tired and you're fed up with the life that you're living that you're heartbroken, there's all this chaos and drama, and because of the isolation and because of the things that you've walked through, you're going to the streets. 
and today that you stopped on this program because God wants to speak straight to your heart. And what Mr. George said about that young man that was on the street and gave his life to Christ two weeks later, you know that your life is in the throes of life and death every single day. And so today, if that is you that you're watching, that you've been pierced by what Mr. George was sharing, give us a call at our prayer line, 888-665-4483. Because one thing I will tell you, it is so hard. I know so many families, my family included, when you lose a young one to gang violence. My cousin was 18 years old when he was shot and killed, gunned down in Toledo, Ohio. And it was so painful to see our family go through that, but I know there's many families across the country that can relate. And so if you're watching today, this is the day of salvation. This is the day that you turn your heart to Jesus. This is the day that lay it down, come from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Mr. George, do you have anything on your spirit to share? Well, how much more time do I have? Well, we got, we got a couple, of, a couple of minutes. <laughs> no, you know, I do want to say, and I'm glad that you spoke to the, uh, that there are women as well. We have a mom's division that, 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 that's, that's dynamite. And so what Rad Dads also represents is family. Yeah. You know, um, so it's the mom's division functions under what we call the umbrella of Mad Dads, yeah. but from inception, there have always been women on our board. Yeah. Okay, and now they are a division that uh, we, 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 we're coming to a community to do an yeah. outreach and they're seeing men and women in that uniform, okay, together representing healthy male and female yeah. uh, relationships, what that yeah. looks like. And let's face it, domestic violence is a huge problem out yeah. here too. Uh, there are some people that think men and women can't coexist without a conflict. So Mad Dads represents a lot of things, you know, uh, the nurturing mother on an outreach, you know, and, 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 and that's an experience in and of itself, yes. the way the women engage yeah. the children and adults in the community. I love that you've established this mom side of things mm -hmm. too, because mm -hmm. our mothers are super significant to the way they nurture and, yes. and love our babies into truth. You know, I, I just really want to speak to the one, you know, if you would have heard George at the beginning, he said this started in the church. Mm -hmm. It started when he approached his pastor, Bishop Joseph Garlington, and it needs to be there always. Social justice ought to begin in the church house mm -hmm. because it's what the Lord called us to not to see transformation for a temporal time but to see an eternal transformation and so if you're here today and you're listening and maybe you feel like you have a call as an evangelist or or you feel like man I really have this teaching gift or I don't even know what my gift is but I love to love on people and I see their pain and my heart breaks I implore you to reach out to mad dads Reach out to that friend, that sister who you're always praying with, that mother who also has come alongside of you and be the change. We can do this little by little. It doesn't take anything but a flicker of light to pierce the darkness. And if that is you, call, reach out to Mad Dads, look them up online and be a part of the solution. And you know, I know we're like rounding up our time here, but can you just take a minute Mr. George, and just to pray for our cities, pray for the streets, just, just cover us in prayer. Sure, Lord God Almighty. Mm. Yes, Lord, it is written that unless you, unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen are awake in vain. Mm. So, Lord God, we pray for you to arise and scatter your enemies, guard our cities, Lord God, guard all the peacemakers that some who have sworn to protect and to serve and others who have that the Lord of the harvest yes. has sent forth. And we pray what you told us to pray, that the Lord of the harvest yes. send laborers into yes. the harvest. Mm -hmm. And Lord God, as a president of Mad Dads, I'm asking for a percentage of them. But the main thing is that you send laborers yes. into the harvest. You send peacemakers into the harvest, Lord God. We thank you that Jesus said with two or three are gathered together in his name, he'll show up himself, the Prince of Peace. So we pray that there are gatherings throughout our nation of just even a couple of people at a time that the Prince of Peace will show up and be present in the midst of the, the tragedies that have been occurring in our cities to speak peace and bring about peace in our communities, in our nation.
Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for just all that you have shared and you've spoken because you know one thing I just think about I remember I used to work in the news and I would write about those stories all the time. It's like breaking news of the shootings and the crimes that were just happening but it is time for us as the ecclesia. It is time for us as the body of Christ to take a stand to draw a line in the sand and say no more we are done and I just truly believe I know the work that you're doing and the men that are around you it is making a difference because you are pulling down those strongholds and there yes. is a harvest there is a move of God that is happening in the cities. I mean, you might hear all the stories in the news, but I'm telling you, I'm seeing like I live in it. Like I'm, I live near Wilkinsburg. I live near the East Hills and in Forest Hills. I am telling you, there are young people that are coming to Jesus like never before. We're seeing them get baptized. We're seeing them give their hearts to Jesus because of what is happening. It is a beautiful thing to just see these young people like never before that have been in so much trauma and so much chaos in their neighborhoods, but they are finding the hope of Jesus and that is something that I just I just get excited for because the remnant is moving and yes. there's a move of God happening in our urban areas. Yes and it's the time it's the hour you know don't get stuck in desperation and, and downtrodden and discouraged be the change you have all the power of the king of the universe he's created worlds without end and he is in you moving in you shaping you and giving you the authority and power to change that around you. My friend, today we are filled with hope that we can arise as the mothers and the fathers this world longs for. Romans 8 tells us that all of creation is groaning for the revealing of the sons and daughters of God. Why is that? Because sons and daughters know who they are. They know the power and the authority they walk in. They know that when they step on that street corner, the atmosphere changes. They know when they show up in that school board meeting, things fall down because they cannot fall stand under the weight of the King of Glory. My friend, there is much to be hopeful for today. You as a daughter and as a son, arise to your rightful position. Take your posture before the King of Glory and watch him change everything around you. Today, there is hope. On tomorrow's Hope Today, helping you to overcome deception with biblical perception. Career prosecutor and ordained minister Wendy Patrick shares how you can apply God's divine wisdom to improve your perception of the people and world around you. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.